What's up, family? Today, I'm going to go through everything that I've done to try to update the Firebase. And I apologize right now for the microphone that picks up just about every single noise that it can. I was trying to wait until I can get a different microphone in. Uh, but... I can't get the one I wanted. And it looks like it's going to take a long time for me to get it. So instead of just waiting, I thought I'd just go ahead and start now. So I apologize ahead of time for whatever background noise you will get from this video. I hope it's not too bad. So as I showed you in a former video, I put the uh, Pico lights behind these spotlights or floodlights, whatever you want to call them, that came with Mega Construct's version of the Firebase. And I think these look really, really nice. And I also put a Pico on each side for this railgun that came with that set. It almost looks like the uh, guns that were on the Cobra set that Mega made that had the lights and sounds. But that's not what this is. This is actually the gun that came with the Firebase. And the beauty is, even with the wires, it does not disturb the swinging or the pivoting of this gun whatsoever. So as we pull out, you can see a banshee coming towards it. And still, this is the best uh, view you're going to get of Captain Cutter. And through these windows, you can see the uh, red warning beacons outside of the uh, R&D lab and the two security guards. Now, these are beacons. These beacons are from Brick Stuff, um, and they're only one stud. So they're relatively small, but they give that great effect of having a, you know, a warning light. So I absolutely love these beacons. Down here I have two Exo Breacher suits attacking three Cyclopses including Kinsano. And another Banshee that's flying in as well. Now what I have holding up the Banshees are the pillars that I got when I picked up those um, base plates, those clear base plates, they came with pillars. And so I just doubled up the pillars to hold up the Banshee. And especially with them being clear, it helps to give the illusion that they're flying. Now, one thing that I am so very proud of is that I am finally finished with this building. It is finally complete as far as the building is concerned. And I just love it. I love the slope on it. Just to give it a little different look. And as you can see, I have a small landing pad outside of the ninth floor.
And all I could put on there is that little hornet. But I think that that actually fits. It works. And I like it. Now with the light coming through, you can actually see a lot of these floors pretty well. But we'll go around and we'll take a look at them. The shipping containers, I updated them by giving them numbers. And I will have to put a wash on these because these numbers are so clean compared to the container. So I don't want uh, that to look that way. And to give the letters the look to me that they were like maybe painted on or what have you is just to put them on in the middle of the beam. As you can see, there's beams on each. One of these, you put it on top of it and then you squeeze tight with your fingers on each side and press down. So it wraps around it instead of you know, just sticking up on there. So I still have the one section out here where they are working to keep things running right for the fusion coils. And of course inside with the rest including the reactor in the back and so on it's the medic bay and in the back the lead physician's office as well as a couple examining rooms and the medical R&D. And of course, in the back of that is the quarantine area. There's a conference room where they're watching a broadcast of Captain Cutter and Isabel. And on the other side of this, which I don't have lit up yet, but there are a couple of bedrooms. And because it's a military base, you're going to find a lot of beds are being shared. As far, A lot of rooms are being shared. So even on the next floor, once again, rooms being shared, three beds in that room, two beds in this room, and two in this room. I'll also put another two beds in this room here. And the barracks, where it'd just be just no rooms whatsoever, just beds. This is the next floor up. And I will continue to make bunk beds. I just ran out of parts and I'm waiting on parts to come in. This floor will be the mess hall. And all I have right now is a... French door refrigerator and a double oven. But I will end up making a counter and then rows of tables and seats. This floor that actually has the small landing pad on the outside of it will be the workout area and a lounge. And then the top floor will end up being the captain's quarters 
and quarters for the three Spartans. Now in the other research and development area, the first thing that I did different is I took the lights out of the floors. And even though that had a kind of cool effect to it, coming through the blue translucent floor, it didn't give enough light. So you couldn't see inside very well. So I put the lights up top and now you can actually see what's going on much easier. Now the lights right there that you see going on in that reactor, that comes from a brick stuff set. What's this set here? Animated console kit for the Lego Doctor Who TARDIS. Now that's what the Doctor Who TARDIS set looks like. And their reactor is blue. And... Uh, the piece in here is also blue. And I plan on using this blue somewhere else. But here, I put it with yellow bricks. Put So I put it just in the middle of yellow bricks and gave a yellow effect instead. But these are the lighting effects when you use that set. And of course, there are some floods that we have captured that are being researched, monitored, what have you, in this area. Just a couple of flood spores. Now I put warning beacons here, but instead of in red, uh, I put them in yellow. And that's just to caution people to the, uh, the machinery for the armor because it does swing and move. And this will keep anybody from getting too close and maybe getting knocked off or what have you. So that's on both sides. And still down the little hallway are these Marines running down the hall on their way to the landing platform. And underneath here, We have lights to shine down, and that's how this area is lit up. Now, if you noticed, I have actually big clear base plates underneath here for the lights to shine through because I like, with a graded floor, I like to be able to look down through the floor. But this actually causes a problem and I'm going to show you what it is in a minute. More warning beacons for the uh, Mantis Cyclops Bay. And just this little detail, I think, brings so much to the mock. War room. And that's a look down the skywalk. As you can see, the lights are on the floor here. And I think that's a really, really nice effect. Instead of it being 
in the ceiling. I think that's really cool looking. I'm going to try to go inside to the um, R&D facility with the guards. It's hard for me to tell because I'm actually doing this and I can't actually see it or reach it. I'm just sticking my arm in with the camera. But I think that looks just amazing. Again, the beacons just look amazing and they just bring so much character to what it is that's built. It looks so much better than just translucent pieces to represent lights. And you can actually have the lights. I'm definitely going to have to put more people and more things into the war room area. Over on this side, where this used to be where the barracks were, now I put an armory instead. And as you can see, I have submarines getting crates, weapons, you name it. And I thought it made more sense to move the armory over here than to have it all the way over on the other side and then put the beds over there instead. And of course, my favorite room is the communications room. And every last figure that I put in helps to bring more life to this room and to make it look so much more like the cutscenes in Halo Wars 2, where you would have all kinds of uh, people working and running, trying to keep things right. The communications area and so on. And as much as I like these computers, Brick Stuff has uh, consoles with <laughs> that are absolutely amazing. I haven't bought them yet, but I plan on buying two. And when you see them, it'll blow your mind. Absolutely incredible stuff that the people do over at Brick Stuff, and that's going to just be moving computer screens. That's going to look so good up in here. Also, what will be coming up as we look at the mechanics bay is I'm going to get bigger beacons. Now, the little beacons that we've been seeing are all one stud. But the bigger beacons will be four studs, so it'll actually encompass that area right there. And the difference with those are that they have different speeds you can do on them and different patterns. So it doesn't have to be just the one pattern of spinning and spinning at that speed. You can actually make them slower, you can strobe them. There's all kinds of effects to it that you can do. And I think that'll look so nice in the four corners here on this landing area for the mechanics bay. Now another uh, special effect that they have, this is a lighting effect, is what I have plugged in here. And this effect, there's several effects to this again. This is the one that I chose. And this is so that I can show the uh, what they're using for energy. As you can see, I've got two people bringing a hose to do more fueling for the vulture. And what's being converted into fuel, that there's an ebb and flow to the power of it. And I used a special effects lighting kit to do that in these two in these two sets of tanks. The big tank and then the smaller tanks above it. And 
Now, there are way more uh, effects than this available, but this is the effect that I'm using to give that power surge look. And I have finally figured out what was wrong with the landing pad. And I had said before how the landing pad had curved on the corners. But now they're laying flat and it's sitting right on top of the supports. And the reason was because, again, I used the big clear plates so that you can see through. But when you use big clear plates on the bottom and then go brick and then tile on top of it, they pull on the corners and it bends it upwards. And that's why it was not touching and it was stressing. So what I did instead was I replaced all of that underneath and I used Technic pieces. Now these are the same kind of pieces that I used to do the skywalk and make it attach on each side so that it would not come apart. And I just took two pieces for each one of the um, graded sections, put one on each side and then connected them together with the pin so they wouldn't come loose. That way I can still see through. And you don't see the pieces but then it takes away that bend that was on the bottom. And if you only want to use mega pieces, uh, mega blocks, mega constructs has also made these pieces. Uh, there are a lot of them in the space rover set, but they have them in other sets and you can use those. Theirs were silver and I wanted black since the landing pad was black. Now the pad itself, the landing area is smaller but the entire thing is the same size because I just doubled up the graded pieces along the sides. Two sides were double already, and then the lengthwise was single. So now I just made them all double. So it's perfectly symmetrical. And in doing that, that gives plenty of space going around it, around the pad that I could go ahead and put my guns back in the corners. So now I have all four guns back in the corners. Now the other thing that I want to bring up is the fact that I put stairs on this side as well. Come around here. In the beginning, I only had the stairs on the left. But I've gone ahead and put them in the right too. Now they're awfully close together since that was not the plan. But there is some space and comes out to a landing here to be able to get to the stairs to go up. I've taken away before the stairs went up and they continued up forward. But instead, I just decided to go ahead and put this little uh, little rung ladder in the middle instead of having plates go up, 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 up. And I think this looks much better and functions better. So this is pretty much, except for some details, what Firebase Zulu is going to look like. Now that's not the end of the Zulu project because this is just, as I've said before, the first, the first board, so to speak. This is all on a 4x8 board, and this is the first one.
There will be a second one that will extend out front. And that's where I will have my mountain and other sections for fighting, for the uh, banished ghosts to come charging down the mountain towards the fire base, and so on. So there are many other things that I still plan on doing for the Zulu project itself. But this is pretty close to a finished version of the fire base. Just finishing up the last couple of floors. The computer details with the uh, new monitors. And of course, the beacons. I know it's a long video, much longer than normal, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Shere Khan. Until next time, I'm hoping all of you stay safe, stay indoors, and continue your happy building.